In our previous videos, we've discussed the importance of factoring time value of money into our investment decisions. So we know we have to discount our cash flows to today's dollars. But which cash flows should we include in our calculations? It isn't always obvious which costs are relevant. In a real world environment, there's a lot of information to sift through. And so exam questions are gonna try and simulate this by giving you too much information to confuse you or distract you. It's important to be able to figure out which costs to factor in and which ones to ignore. So today we'll be going over some of the different types of costs. First, we'll look at costs that we shouldn't include, like sunk costs. Next, we'll take a look at some of the costs that we should factor into our calculations, like opportunity costs. And lastly, we'll apply all of this to an NPV problem. First, let's talk about the costs that don't matter. Let's say you and your friends are planning a two-week road trip in your car. How much is that going to cost? You'll need to pay for gas money, and you should also consider the cost of wear and tear on the car. And of course, you pay $300 per month for car insurance, so that's $150 of car insurance, right? But hold on a second. Wouldn't you be paying for car insurance anyway? So that cost is not relevant to the decision, since it doesn't vary between the alternatives. You have to pay it regardless of whether or not you take the trip. The costs that are relevant to calculating our net present value are differential costs, that is, costs that vary between alternatives. So if an investment decision won't change a particular cost, then we shouldn't factor in that cost. Implicitly, NPV calculations compare the value added from an investment to the status quo with no investment, not to some magical world where nobody spends any money. Accounting numbers are based on the past, and so they include costs that should be ignored for the purposes of decision making. One type of non-differential cost many people mistakenly include in NPV calculations is a sunk cost. A sunk cost is a cost you've already incurred that is not recoverable, regardless of what decision or investment you choose. The expression, don't cry over spilt milk, sums it up nicely. Another one is, don't throw good money after bad. It can be hard to ignore sunk costs. Sometimes ignoring them can feel wasteful or like you're giving up. But since we can't change the past, it truly is rational to ignore sunk costs. For instance, let's say you spend $100 on tickets to see a Broadway show. But the day of the show rolls around and you're feeling sick. You know you'd enjoy yourself more if you just stayed home, but you can't bring yourself to waste $100 tickets, since you can't sell them or give them away. So you go and sniffle your way through popular. Many of us would make the same choice, but it simply isn't rational. Regardless of whether you go to the concert or not, you've spent $100. So now your only choice is between staying home and going to the show. If your utils, or units of happiness, from staying home are still higher than your utils of happiness from attending the musical, then going to the musical is actually a poor choice. In this way, sunk costs can push people to move forward with unprofitable projects. Sunk costs can also cause people to abandon otherwise profitable projects. Let's say a company spends five years and over $5 million developing a perfume called Opulence. Just before the launch, they learn that the perfume actually repels men. It'll cost another $5 million to alter the chemical formula. The company expects to earn a profit of $6 million from selling the perfume. The CEO decides not to alter the formula since the company will have spent $10 million to earn $6 million, so the project should be abandoned. We'll be reporting a net loss on our income statement. But look at the numbers. Regardless of whether we move forward with the perfume or not, we've already spent $5 million. This is a sunk cost. Our decision won't change that. So we're actually comparing one option of spending five million and earning six million to the other option of spending zero and earning zero. Moving forward with the project is a better option. Note that just because you spend money on something in the past does not make it a sunk cost. Consider the money you spend on buying a house. If years later I'm deciding whether or not I should move to Alaska, the cost of my house is differential. I can factor it into my decision because I will recover this cost if I decide to move and sell my house. The recoverable cost is also known as the salvage value. Only costs that can't be recovered are considered sunk. Now let's talk about the costs that do matter. Differential costs. These are the costs that vary between alternatives. In an NPV calculation, these are the costs that result in a current or future cash flow, the antithesis of a sunk cost, if you will. Most of these are pretty easy to spot. If we buy a dog, now we have to start buying dog food. If we start a restaurant, we're going to have to buy ovens and equipment. But some costs are easy to miss, since they don't involve accounting numbers. One example is opportunity cost. Opportunity costs are about what could have been. The return that you would have received if you spent your time or money on another project instead of this one. It's the value of the next best alternative you must give up. 
In finance, the market interest rate reflects the opportunity cost of capital. For example, consider land that the company already owns. Accounting numbers fail to include these important costs, so we must add them in. It's easy to forget to include the cost of an asset the company already owns, since the company doesn't have to spend money to buy it. But that doesn't mean it's free. Let's say our company is deciding whether or not to open a restaurant in downtown Vancouver. Luckily, the project will require very little cash, since they already own the land. But this land still has a cost, opportunity cost. After all, by building a restaurant, we're forfeiting the opportunity to use the land for anything else, like selling it to a development company or building a parking lot. Let's include the market value of the land in our project cost, since building a restaurant means we're losing out on the money from selling the land. When we include our opportunity costs in our NPV calculation, we know that we can accept any project with an NPV above zero, since it's at least slightly better than the next best alternative. Now let's look at an NPV problem and see if we can identify which costs are relevant. Take a second to pause the video and determine which of these costs you should include in your NPV calculation. Let's go through this problem together and look for costs that are relevant. Here it says we've spent $20,000 on realtor's fees. Regardless of whether or not you go through with the sale of the house, you won't get that money back. The benefits of following through on the house sale are already reflected in the reduced living costs mentioned later. So the $20,000 itself is a sunk cost that we should ignore. What about your grandma's wedding ring? Well, it's not truly free, is it? If you give it to your spouse, none of your other family members can use it, and you can't sell it. The opportunity cost of the ring is the market value or the value in use of the ring to your family, whichever one is higher. Let's say you could sell it for higher than your family values keeping it, at $12,000. Ring insurance is a relevant cost, since we only have to pay it if we do get married. The $500 is relevant because it's also a differential cost. Next, it's great that we own the reception hall, but it still isn't free to use it. What if the reception hall is fully booked? By holding your wedding there, you lose out on potential profits from renting the space to someone else that night. The rate you could charge someone else, minus any variable costs, is the opportunity cost. Let's say this cost is $2,000. The honeymoon is not relevant because it's not a differential cost. You would spend $10,000 on a trip anyway. Your reduced living expenses are relevant to the decision. You can look at this as an annual cash inflow of $2,000 per year, since you're saving $2,000 a year. We include costs that result in a present or future value and ignore costs related to historical cash flows. We can subtract the cost of ring insurance from this $2,000 gain to get a net inflow of $1,800 per year. Let's find the present value of this annual inflow as a perpetuity, assuming a market rate of 6%. This yields exactly $30,000. This is almost the same as calculating an annuity using an expected lifetime of 70 years, since cash flows so far into the future contribute less and less to our present value. This yields a positive net present value of $15,500. Go tell your partner the good news. It's like I always say, finance and romance do mix. That's why they rhyme. Let me summarize what we just went over. The first step in any NPV problem is to determine which costs are relevant. We want to include differential costs, that is, costs that vary between alternatives, like opportunity costs, which can sometimes be difficult to spot. We want to exclude any non-differential costs, like sunk costs, which are easy to include by mistake. Now you're ready to calculate NPV. Thank you.